Okay, so we've got this crazy looking integral to look at. And this is the integral of the square root of x. And under that square root, we have another square root of x. And under that one, we have another one. And this carries on until infinity. So I've got two very nice solutions to look at. The first one relies on the law of thirds. So just remember that the law of thirds states that the square root of x times y is the same as the square root of x times the square root of y. So the idea is to try and split this up into separate terms involving square roots. So for the first step, we can look at applying this law to this first square root. So we can split this as the first term, just an x, and then the rest of this infinite expression as the second term. So this gives us the integral of the square root of x times the square root of this second term in the green bracket, which is already another square root. So square root of x times another square root, and this carries on until infinity, dx. So we can iterate this whole process, applying this rule inside these, the inner square roots and just factoring out. And this is going to give us the integral of the square root of x times the square root of the square root of x. We have two square roots here. And for the third term, it's gonna be the same, except we have three square roots. One, two, three. And this carries on until infinity. So the fourth term has four square roots, etc. And now let's try and write this in terms of indices, so to make it a little bit clearer. So this is the integral of x, and the square root of x is just x to the power of a half, and the second term is x to the power of a half, and that to the power of a half. Third term is the same, except we have three square roots, so this is half, and another one, and this carries on until infinity. And now to simplify this, we need to use some of our laws of indices. So just remember, if we have x to the power of a, and then this to the power of b, we can actually just multiply these numbers. So this is the same as x to the power of a times b. And also, if we have two numbers of the same base to different powers, so x to the power of a times x to the power of b, we can just add the indices. So this is the same as x to the power of a plus b. So just applying these rules, what do we have? We have the integral, x to the power of a half. We can multiply these numbers together using the first law. And this is a half times a half, which is a quarter. And for the third term, we apply this three times to get a half times a half times a half, which is one over eight. And this process carries on. And now, um, during the connection with the second law, since all these terms have the same base, we can just add the powers all together. And this is going to be an infinite sum. So this is the same as the integral of x to the power of this series. And what are the terms? So these are 1 over 2, 1 over 4, 1 over 8, and the pattern is 1 over 2 to the power of n, with n ranging between 1 and infinity. And I need a dx here. Okay, so what do we notice? This in here is actually a geometric series, and the common ratio is a half, which is less than 1, so this is going to converge. And then just remember that the, the formula for the sum of a geometric series, if our ratio is r, uh, to the power of n, and then we sum from n is equal to 1 to infinity. This equals r times 1 over 1 minus r. And the factor r in front is just because we're starting at 1. We'd normally start at 0, and this is where we get this formula, 1 over 1 minus r. And because we're starting at 1, we also need the, the initial term in the front. Okay, so if I have space at the bottom, let's just evaluate the series. This is the integral of x to the power, just using this formula, we have a half times 1 over 1 minus a half dx. And then we can just evaluate this. So what is this? Integral of x to the power of, and this is 1 over 1 minus a half, which is 1 over a half, and a half times 1 over a half, that's just 1. So we're left with the integral of x, which is lovely. This is very simple. And obviously, to integrate this is just raise the power by 1 and divide by the new power. So this is x squared over 2 and plus c, which is the integration factor. So this is our answer to this really weird looking integral. So now we're gonna look at another method to solve this integral, one that uses a trick and it's gonna be a little quicker, but let's just recap what we've done. We've shown that the expression under the integral, this one right here with all the uh, square roots, this is actually equal to x. So this is kind of the whole idea to this method. We show that this um, infinite expression is equal to x. And the second method is essentially a way to, can we show this is equal to x a bit quicker? Can we use a trick 
um, to get there a little bit quicker and it turns out there is a trick and that's what we're going to look at now. Okay, so for the second method we want to show that this expression on top of the orange line is equal to x. So the way we do this is we're going to let this whole expression equal to y. So we're just going to call it y. So we have the square root of x times the square root of x and more square roots like this. And doing this allows us to use this following trick. Now the key insight that we need is that this expression is defined recursively. So we have the square root of x and then the whole expression is repeated right after the first x. So this means we can write this whole thing as y equals the square root of x times y because this whole thing is the same as our original expression because it goes on until infinity. So now we can try and solve this for y to find out what this is. So if we square both sides, we have y squared is equal to x times y. And then just dividing by y, we have y is equal to x. And that's exactly what we're trying to show. We show that this whole expression is equal to x. So just like before, this integral actually equals the integral of x dx, which we know is x squared over 2 plus c. So that's a nice little trick you can use to also solve this integral.